So I just uh, rendered a small shloka on the Divine Mother and um, in this shloka it um, talks about the different forms of the Divine Mother. Uh, today we were going to speak about the divine aspect of divinity in the form of Devi and um, I know that you mentioned Kalima as, as the topic and we will speak about that form of Devi but what I'd like to share um, with all of you today is that um, you know the Divine Mother has has come into our lives for various various reasons and sometimes when we look at the forms of the Divine Mother one gets very carried away one does not understand um, the aspect of why she is in a certain form and what Guruji normally speaks about what he tries to teach his devotees and teach all of us is that through this bhakti relationship that we have with the universe, with the mother, with the divine mother. That is all that she looks at. When one has to have the relationship of love with divinity, with the divine mother. So he says, normally he says the easiest way to worship the divine mother is through that love relationship. Because God can only be found in the simple things. So there was a story that Gurudev narrates uh, about the Divine Mother where he says that there was a Brahmana and there was a Shudra. So the Shudra um, asked the Brahmana, can you please teach me how to worship Devi? I want to learn the rituals. And the Brahmana says, no, I cannot do that because you are not of the Brahman caste. Now, when I relay the story, I don't mean to pick on caste and Varna. It's uh, something beyond that, but the principle of the story is that uh, listen very carefully what I'm trying to share. So the Shudra goes continuously to Vadi the Brahmana, please teach me, please teach me, please teach me. And then one day the Brahmana got very upset and he said, okay, if you want to learn, the first thing is go and drown yourself in the nearby river. And so the Shudra happily goes excitedly, simple-minded man, so he goes, he doesn't think anything of it. And he takes the boat and he goes to the middle of the river and he jumps to drown himself. And as he jumps to drown himself, the river dries up. And in that, the Divine Mother appears. And the Divine Mother says, you wanted to meet me so much, to have darshan of me so much. I'm coming to eat in your house this evening. So this Shudra devotee, this devotee gets very excited and he goes off to his house and he says, wife, wife, the Divine Mother said she's coming today to eat. Please prepare a big feast. And everyone was very excited. He called his friends, his neighbors, and now they waited for the Divine Mother to come. And the Divine Mother did not end up coming, but there was an old lady who was waiting there to eat the prashad that they had made. So this guy says, okay, it's fine. The mother has not come. Divine Mother has not uh, graced us with her presence, but it's okay. We can feed this old lady. She is just as good as a mother. So they start feeding her and then she changes into the Rupam of Devi. And she says that the one that fills the relationship with with us with bhakti and love is where I shall appear. So as much as we look at you know the intricacies of rituals and and we have to learn so many things to to praise the goddess but if that is lacking of love and devotion and bhakti then this process of physical action is not valid. So what we have forgotten in this time in this time of Kali Yuk, what I see with a lot of us, you know, it, I must compliment all of you on Utsa Vampa, we going through all of the, the content and to see the, the, the type of um, ecstasy that you uh, produce things for the youth, for our age group is, is very commendable and hats off to all of you. And I say that with a lot of love and, and blessing because 
in this time and age, it is important to propagate our Sanatana Dharma and to make people understand. And I understand why you want to have certain topics so that people can be educated through this media, through Instagram. But what we also have to remind ourselves as the youth of, of Sanatana Dharma is that we need to fill our actions with that bhakti and love. Because the Divine Mother will be seated next to you. And when you do not put that love first, you are her child. You are her child. And just as a child doesn't need to have anything when a child goes to a mother. When a child wants to love their mother, that mother accepts wholeheartedly. And the thing that stops us from doing this in today's day and age is just the mind. So Guruji normally teaches us that the journey from the mind to the heart is only 40 centimeters. If you take a ruler and you measure this journey, it is only 40 centimeters. But for us, the journey of 40 centimeters takes the entire lifetime up to be the age of 80 or 90 to realize the purpose of why we are here on earth. And the mind always wants to be with the heart. But the thing that prevents the heart and the mind from becoming union, becoming one, is our pride, our ego, our desires. So all of these things are filled. When we look at um, Rakta Beach, the demon that Mahakali had taken incarnation of, it is said in the Devi Mahatmayam that it is through his great power that he had as an Asura, that every drop that fell, every drop of blood that fell on earth, a new form of that Rakta Bija was created. So the earth was getting polluted with the form of Rakta Bija, Asura. And he was becoming so powerful. So then Maha, uh, 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 Devi had taken the incarnation of Kali, Mahakali. Now when we look at Mahakali, Kali Ma, um, she represents this time, time, Kala. And when we look at time, we don't have to go very far. We look at our own life and see the power of time. Like when we was in school, we were like, no, I want to get out of school. I want to go to work. I want to have money. I want to do this and do that. And then when we are out of school, we like think our ah, school was the best days of mine. So when you look at this, how powerful time plays on the relationship with the divine. And that form of Kali has been uh, widely misunderstood and also widely understood through experience. So there is a flip side to the form and understanding the divine mother in the form of Mahakali. And when we look at this, we see that the representation of time is important for us to understand that in life, Bhagavad Gita, Veda, Shastras talk about the Varna system or they talk about the Ashrama Sari. So from a certain age, a certain age, you are a Brahmachari. That means that we have to educate ourselves, learn, mold ourselves into the divine individual that God created or intended for us to be. And then you move on to Grahastha Ashrama, where you get married and you become a householder and you have children and you start teaching those children the values and models of what you have learned during your Brahmachari life. And then you move on to the stage of Anaprastha, where your entire duty as parents have been fulfilled, your kids are married, they have their children. And then you move on to the a last stage of your life, which is Sanyasa Ashrama, where you take the understanding that you have to start to detach from everything that you have acquired in life. And basically, Mahakali, in my understanding of philosophy, is that she teaches us that the power of time and that everything happens in its time. We must understand that if we believe that Divine Mother exists, we must believe that she makes no mistake in her creation. And we must accept the experience of life as it happens. Like just last year, we can all look back and like, 
if somebody had COVID, we all were thinking the worst. We had depression, we were on antidepressants, we were getting panic attacks, anxiety. But now if somebody has COVID, it's like, okay, we know what to do. So the evolution of time from last year to this year has made us evolve in many different ways. The experience that what we experience. So what it teaches us in life is to accept. Acceptance is a very beautiful thing. It's a very beautiful concept in the spiritual world because when you accept this experience that is happening. So Mahakali took that fierce, fierce form and she shows us that she is, that is how frightening time can be. You don't know how time just moves. Today you got up in the morning and then tonight you're just going to sleep and you don't realize how fast the days and months are moving. And this also is for us to understand that the Divine Mother is so magnificent in her being, in her power. And time for us is a very small thing. We don't look at time, Kala, as an important thing. Every minute that we are using to breathe, should be filled with the the mind being affixed on divinity should be filled with japa should be filled with seva because we don't know how much of time we have left so even in Srimad bhagavatam you'll find that kamsa got very angry because he was told that the eighth son of vasudev will kill him so when you know your time of death you're not going to be very happy when we have a birthday, we say happy birthday, we rejoice, we celebrate. But if you know your time of death, will you enjoy any birthday of yours? <laughs> You'll be thinking, oh no, I got only five more birthdays left. What's going to happen? <laughs> so do you see the power of time and how it plays such a vital mental, physical impact on all of us? And Mahakali shows us that this tongue, when she speaks out the tongue, I know there are many stories that tell that when she was out of control and Lord Shiva had come and she stepped on Lord Shiva and then she realized her mistake and her tongue came out. But if you look at the philosophical aspect of it, the principle of it is that through this tongue, we create our experience of life. This tongue determines how we are with each other. This tongue determines the love that we share with each other, the, the goodness that we, that we share with each other. So it is through this tongue also we create our own misery. It is through this tongue that we create our curse and blessing. That is why Mahakali sticks her tongue out and says, be careful in Kaliuk. This tongue will be your destruction or this tongue. So when you look at the form of Kali, I spoke about the tongue. And this tongue is a reminder that when you want to worship, when you want to be close to the Divine Mother, also we have to chant mantra. We have to chant mantra with this tongue. So the purity of this tongue is very, very important to all of us. That is why um, Puranas teach us, Srimad Bhagavata teach us so many stories so that we can understand how much was said through this tongue. How much was created through this tongue? And if we can understand these concepts of the Divine Mother, that she is the beholder of this great time, this Kala that we are encapsulated in. Nobody knows what will happen after we finish this life. Nobody knows what will happen in the next five minutes. That is how uncertain life is as anyone whether you are an animal or you are a human. So when you look at these concepts of, of, of life and relation to the Divine Mother, it's always important to remember, even the viewers, that when you want to pray to the Divine Mother, you fill this prayer with love. And this is the only thing that the Divine Mother looks at. When her child is chanting her mantra with love you think not the mother will come she will come she will bless and we've seen many many instances where divine mother has taken um, her form 
Jureen Pooja's when Guruji has uh, Navaratri in his ashrams. And it's a constant reminder that when you fill your prayer with love, it is the most powerful of all. So another aspect I'd like to also talk about, um, maybe not deem with, because I have no authority to deem with, but also the fact that when we look at the picture of Kalima, we see she stands on Lord Shiva. Okay. In Hindu mythology, in Hindu scripture, Lord Shiva is the consciousness of everything. He's that divine consciousness. And he's given such a great respect in Hindu uh, scriptures. So there's a question somebody asked me long time ago. Swamiji, if Mahakali is the Divine Mother, how come she doesn't know Lord Shiva? How come she step on Lord Shiva? <laughs> how can she make such a mistake? I said, no, this story is just somebody who has tried to make sense of it from a very logical way. But nothing in our scripture is, can, can, you can learn nothing in a logical way because scripture goes beyond logic. It goes all with feeling, with that bhakti you have inside of you, that surrender, that love. So, Lord Shiva, if you look in Tamil, if you, I, I studied many years in Tamil Nadu. And the Sa, so in Sanskrit, Sava means dead body. Savasana, you know, where you lie down after you do your yoga, like a dead body, this is it. And then... Shiva means that Shakti that stems within the body, that power, that power, that driving force that we all have is Mahashakti, the Divine Mother in that form. So when we look at these these things in in our in our religion, in our um, in our scriptures, we find that a lot of things, just like Kalima, has been misunderstood. And it's very beautiful that Utsav app actually comes up with such beautiful car, um, ideas to educate people. You know, I would be sitting here today as Swami Randa Ramanuja and many would understand what I'm trying to say. Some people won't. But this is life, you know, it is a journey. And in the journey, it doesn't mean you have to take everything and put it in your bag. In the journey, you take what is needed and you leave the rest. That is why um, our ancestors lived in so much of peace and harmony. It's because they only ate and they absorbed what they needed. But today, because man, through his greed, he takes everything, even if he doesn't need it. So when we look at the Divine Mother, we must remember these three things that I spoke about. And how we can nurture, the whole idea of this life, of this path, is to nurture that relationship with God. I am a Sri Vaishnava. I, for me, I can speak a lot about Paramatma Sri Krishna, Lakshmi Narayan, Srimad Bhagavatam, all the Vaishnava texts. But that is my relationship with the Divine. And then you have your relationship, which is the Divine Mother. But no relationship can exist without love. When the Devatas ask Sri Krishna, what is he doing in Vrindavan? He says, Hare Premanadiya ki sada ulti bahedar kon paveya kopar. So that divine love, that love is a opposite flowing mechanism. Love always flows in the opposite direction. From me to you, love flows. It never flows in the same direction as us. <laughs> so this exchange must always be, you must always be aware of this exchange in prayer, in having the relationship with the Divine Mother. And um, I'm not sure exactly where are you guys situated. Is it Bengal? Right. Right, yes, yes. So I know Bengal is a very famous place for, for the Divine Mother and a lot of miracles itself has happened in there. There was a story of Paramahamsa Ramakrishna which I never forget. 
Um, and I know the story because I, uh, during COVID, I was taking a lot of sadhus and uh, um, people, uh, you know, poor people to the hospital, the Ramakrishna Mission Hospital. It was part of our seva as an ashram to do the med med uh, medical camps. And there was a doctor there who told me a story that um, related to Swami Vivekananda and Paramahamsa Ramakrishna. And um, one day Paramahamsa Ramakrishna suddenly stopped talking to Swami Vivekananda. So you do know that this was a Guru Shishya relationship they shared. And Swami Vivekananda, Paramahamsa Ramakrishna suddenly ignored Swami Vivekananda for many days. And he got very angry with him. So Swami Vivekananda kept coming to the ashram, doing his seva, going back, coming to the ashram. He didn't worry. Then one day Paramahamsa Ramakrishna asks Swami Vivekananda, aren't you upset with me that I'm not talking to you? Don't you care that I'm ignoring you? He says, no. And Paramahamsa uh, Ramakrishna asks, why? He says, because I love you. And that admission of love was so strong between Guru and Shishya that Swami Vivekananda had to leave the ashram. Sometimes when the admission of something is very strong, we are not able to uh, withstand that energy. And we either walk away. So just like that, when we are praying, when we are with the Divine Mother, uh, we need to read, we need to understand the pastimes of great Mahatmas like Paramahamsa Ramakrishna that taught us so much with the relationship. So what we can learn through uh, Gurus, through Swamis, through their experience, we have to take this and we have to incorporate it into our relationship with the Divine. And that's why that uh, Gurudev Params uh, Vishwananda, he, wherever he goes, he always bows down at the saints and at other gurus. Uh, even though he is a guru himself, but the humility is what God wants to see in all of us. <laughs> but it was an absolute pleasure speaking to all of you. And um, I wish you all very, very well on your spiritual journey. And hopefully when I'm back in India in the next two weeks, um, I would come for Navaratri and we could, you could take me around and show me all the good places uh, to enjoy Navaratri in Bengal. <laughs> Absolutely. That would be an honor. I think that was very insightful and uh, all of us were completely into the stories and into the journey that you have been talking about. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to have you and it's a blessing for us. Uh, thank you so much for coming and uh, really it was really inspirational Thank and we love to stay connected with you and in future also we will again love to connect. Definitely. Blessings to all of you. Jai Gurudev. Thank you.